Okay, so we're going to look at this problem where we're finding critical points, local extrema, and intervals on which a function is increasing and decreasing. And so one thing that these problems don't explicitly tell you, but you should always do, is to think about some things about the original function. All of these things that it's asking about here really have to do with the first derivative, so we will get to that. But we should think about some things about the original function, some things like domain. So this function, uh, if I look at domain and think about the usual domain restrictions, I don't have any denominators, I don't have any radicals with an even index, I don't have any logarithms, and I don't have any inverse trig functions. So there are no restrictions on this domain. So I should expect that this graph is going to go from negative infinity to infinity. Uh, I might think about end behavior of this function, so I might think a little bit about what happens to the output values of this function as x approaches infinity or negative infinity. And so you can use some theorems uh, from what we did at the very beginning of this semester. You can use numerical uh, values on your calculator, plugging in some very large values of x to think about what happens. But as x approaches infinity, everything here gets very large, so this function approaches infinity. So that means that on the right-hand side of the graph, I should expect that the output values of the function get infinitely large, so that's going up. Uh, and then when I think about the limit as the other end of the domain here, as x approaches negative infinity, this one might require a little bit more work uh, from your calculator, maybe not quite as intuitive to think about what happens here. Uh, this exponential function, as x approaches negative infinity, will approach zero. This part will get infinitely large, so one question might be sort of which one wins. And so you can use some numerical values to help you with that, uh, but you should see pretty easily that these function outputs approach zero. Okay, so that tells us about the end behavior of our graph. Uh, I can do some other things. I can plug in some x values and get out some y values. One thing that might be helpful to plug in, a really easy one to plug in, might be x equals zero. So I can plug in zero. For x, I have e to the 0 times 0 squared plus 0. Uh, 0 squared plus 0 is 0 times 1, so I'll get 0. So that tells me I have a point at 0, 0. OK, so although none of that was explicitly asked about in this problem, all of that stuff is helpful when you think about what's going on with this function and its graph, and uh, when we start to think about what actually is asked in this function. Uh, all right, so in this question, we need to find critical points. So the first thing we want to do is find our derivative and think a little bit about what the derivative tells us about these other things here. So we're going to need product rule for our derivative, right? So uh, the derivative of the first function, derivative of e to that power, will be e to that power times the derivative of what's inside that power, a little chain rule there as well. So that's the derivative of my e to the 2x times the second function plus the first function times the derivative of the second function, so times 2x plus 1. Okay, so there's my first derivative. I may want to tidy this up a little bit. Uh, I have an e to the 2x that I can factor out and clean this up a little bit. Um, but I'm going to be using this first derivative to answer all of these other things that it's asked me about here. All right, so. Um, Actually, I might go ahead and distribute through this 2 and this e to the 2x, make sure that we have some like terms here and we're clear about how to combine those and then do the factoring. If you can manage all of the algebra in less steps, that's okay. Uh, 2 e to the 2x times x squared and then plus 2 e to the 2x times x. From here, I will have a 2 e to the 2x times x and an e to the x, e to the 2x term. All right, so I have a couple of like terms here in the middle. Uh, I can make that 4, 4, e to the 2x times x. I'm going to combine those two middle terms. Okay, so I can then go ahead and factor out my e to the 2x. And I'm left with 2x squared plus 4x plus 1. Okay, so there's a simplified form of my first derivatives. All right, so when I want to think about critical points, I want to think about where that derivative is 0 or does not exist. Where that derivative is 0 or does not exist. So let's start by thinking about where the derivative uh, does not exist. 
this derivative exists everywhere for all values of x. I don't have any trouble with this derivative being undefined for any values of x. So nope, we don't have any of those for this problem. I can, however, think about some values where my derivative might be 0. All right, so I'm going to set this equation equal to 0 and then solve for x. This is to find my critical point. OK, so if it weren't already in factored form, that would be something I would want to do here, factor out what I have. And then since I have this equation in factored form equal to 0, I can think about, well, the only way I get 0 when I multiply two things is if either of these two things is equal to 0. So that tells me that either 0 equals e to the 2x or 0 equals this whole factor, 2x squared plus 4x plus 1. Okay, e to any power is never 0. That's always positive, so I don't get any x values from here. From this one, I have a quadratic equation, so it either factors, or I can use completing the square, or I can use quadratic formula to find any x values that would make this one 0. Okay, so quadratic, this one doesn't factor, so we'll use quadratic formula here. Uh, x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared, that would be 16, minus 4 times a times c, so minus 8, all over 2a. Okay, and then we're going to want to simplify that. So 16 minus 8 is 8, and I have square root of 8 here, which I will rewrite as 2 square root of 2. And then I may want to split this up. I can leave that in that form, but I may want to split that up. I would probably rewrite this as negative 4 over 4, which simplifies to negative 1. And then plus or minus, put my plus or minus, 2 square root of 2 over 4, which would simplify 2 square root of 2 over 2. All right, so there are my critical points. There are my critical points. All right, so then the other thing that I want to do here is think about those critical points and whether they give me local extrema, uh, maxima, minima, neither, and also the intervals on which the function is increasing and decreasing. All right, I'm going to go over here to the side and work on that. And so we're going to take these critical points and do some work for increasing, decreasing. All right, so actually all of the rest of this can be answered by using those critical points. I'm going to make a number line here. On my number line, I'm going to put those critical points, and I want to put those in order from smallest to largest. So negative 1 minus square root of 2 over 2 is going to be smaller. And negative 1 plus square root of 2 over 2 will be larger. And then what I want to test is in the intervals, those critical values divide my number line up into regions. In those intervals, in those regions, I want to test whether my derivative is positive or negative. OK, so I'm going to be looking at this derivative here and determine whether this is positive or negative. So I just want to pick some values in each interval, plug into my derivative, and determine whether I get positive or negative derivatives here. So this is a good, good application for your calculator. Uh, when you do that, you plug in a number that is less than negative 1 minus square root of 2 over 2. You should get that this derivative is positive. Your first derivative is positive. When you plug in a number that is between negative 1 minus square root of 2 over 2 and negative 1 plus square root of 2 over 2, you should get that this derivative is negative. I'm just going to label that with a negative. This is my derivative that's negative. And then when I plug in a number that's bigger than negative 1 plus square root of 2 over 2 into my derivative, I should get that my derivative is positive. OK, so that tells me about my original function, and that actually tells me my intervals on which my function is increasing and decreasing, and whether these critical points are locations of maxima or minima. So when my derivative is positive, that means that the original function is increasing. When my derivative is negative, that tells me that my original function is decreasing. And when my derivative is positive again, that tells me that my function is increasing again. All right, so if I think about a function that goes up, down, up, then I can just think about these points and just think about it visually and think about that this point at x equals negative 1 minus square root of 2 over 2 would be at a high point on the graph, so that's a location of a local max. And if I have a function that goes down and then back up, 
then this point would be at a low point for the function, so that would be the location of a local min. All right, so I did a little scratch work there to justify this, but we're going to talk here. Uh, so I have two critical points. One of those is the location of a local maximum, and one of those is the location of a local minimum. And I also have intervals on which my function is increasing and decreasing. All right, so we're going to go ahead and write that stuff here. Uh, we can say that the function is increasing on, we're going to write intervals of x values. So remember, we said our domain starts at negative infinity. And then we're going to go up to this negative 1 minus square root of 2 over 2. And then the other place that the function is increasing is from negative 1 plus square root of 2 over 2 to infinity, to the other end of the domain. So the function is increasing on that interval. The function is decreasing between these x values. Um, x equals negative 1 minus square root of 2 over 2 is the location of a local max. And x equals negative 1 plus square root of 2 over 2 gives the location of a local min. All right, so uh, technically, to answer those questions exactly the way it is worded, uh, the local extrema really are the output values of the function, of the original function at those two x values. So the local extrema, the local maximum, is really the original function, f of x, evaluated at this x value. Um, I'm just going to leave it like that. We're going to look at a graph and look at some decimal approximations here. Uh, the local minimum technically would be the output value of this function at this point. Okay, so we got a bunch of information here uh, that it asked us for. Critical points, I found those x values where the derivative was equal to zero. And then I did some work with a sign chart here to determine all the rest that it asked. All right, we're going to look at a graph here. And I'm, in particular, I want to show you a graph on your graphing calculator so we can be a little bit clear about what we see. All right, so this is the function, the original function graphed in the standard viewing window on the graphing calculator. And if we look at this work that we have here, where we said things like the domain is negative infinity to infinity, and you look at the graph that you see on your graphing calculator, that's hard to see, right? Uh, other things that are hard to see on that graphing calculator is the places left of x equals 0, where we've got these things where the function is increasing and decreasing, and we have a local maximum and a local minimum. So we can use the graph on the graphing calculator, but it's important to make sure that you understand that this calculus is telling you things that might be hidden behavior. Whether you're graphing that on the calculator or even more sophisticated technology, there's often hidden behavior that can be difficult to see. If I think about all of this stuff here and try to use what I have on the calculator to draw a little bit better graph, I know I have a point at 0, 0. I know that the right end of the function is going to be going up. Uh, I know that my function, um, I know that my function is, uh, has a local minimum at this x value, which is a little bit left of x equals 0. I know that my function has a local maximum at my other x value. Uh, negative 1 minus 2 square root of 2 over 2, which is over here. And I know that the end behavior of the function uh, on the left end, the y values approach 0. So if I zoomed in a little bit more on my calculator and thought a little bit more carefully about it, I might be able to see a little bit better representation on that graph. But knowing where to zoom in is going to come from all of your calculus work here. All right, we're going to look at another video where we look at more with this function. Uh, some things that the second derivative can tell you about the same function. And so we'll look at this same function a little bit more.